Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and today I'm doing something just for fun, for me. And I actually didn't intend to turn this into a video, but I posted about it on Twitter, and I got a ton of interest, so here we are. What I'm gonna do today is attempt to create two new expansion cards for my framework laptop. An enclosure that houses the RF dongle for my wireless mouse, and a magnetic charging card. Are either of these necessary? No, my USB charger works just fine and you know, Bluetooth mice exist. However, Framework has an expansion card developer program with a GitHub repository where you can get 2D and 3D CAD models of the expansion card enclosure and reference PCB designs. So I can download the code, modify it in KiCad to suit my needs, send it off to get the PC printed, then solder on the SMDs, put it in the closure, and I have a high quality reproducible component. I mean, that's how I should do it, and I'm sure Framework intended people to create expansion cards in that way, but that's not what I'm doing today. Hours of PCB design and KiCad, not really engrossing content. No, today, I'm just gonna YOLO it. This is the DIY model after all, so I'm gonna keep DIYing it. I got a bunch of components and IO breakouts, and I'm just gonna solder together until I get something that works. Let's do this. Okay, in all seriousness, what I'm doing here today is just some preliminary, mostly fitment work. I wanna get measurements worked out before I do finalize PCB designs and send them off to be printed and assembled. Getting back 10 or whatever the minimum order is and having them all like a half a millimeter off would really suck. I actually went into this with a plan to get that done, but you know what they say about the best laid plans. So let's start with the magnetic charging card because I think this one may go to plan, which is simple. I have a male and a female USB-C connector, which I'll solder together. Then I'll get on Fusion 360 to tweak the enclosure to hold everything and allow me to recess the magnetic Type-C charging port into the adapter so it's flush with the laptop. And I think for this video, I'm just gonna copy the master of DIY Adam Savage and his one day builds and I'll just let the camera run while I work and I'll a stop occasionally to fill you in on the progress. The first step is to figure out how I'm gonna fit and secure these three components in here. And to do that, I need to modify the enclosure with some compartments or brackets to hold these in place. So I'll just need some digital calipers and let's get Fusion 360 fired up. All right, that took three attempts, mostly because both batteries for my digital calipers were dead. 
So I just had to estimate anything in between whole millimeters. That was fun. Luckily, these print in like 20 minutes. And first note, I ended up not modifying the enclosure I got from the framework GitHub, which I'm calling the bottom half, which unless I'm completely missing something is the only part of the enclosure available. I just designed a whole new top half of the enclosure that'll hold the pieces. Again, just a bit of trial and error and everything fits, including the cord, which I actually forgot about in the first one, but everything fits good. And honestly, this is actually all I need to do because like I said, I only really did this to get some measurements. All I need to know is exactly where the edges of these two USB ports are inside the enclosure footprint. And I can design the PCB around those. But again, that's pretty anticlimactic for YouTube. Y'all wanna see a working expansion card. So to make it work, I need to solder the two PCBs together. And I'm gonna attempt to do that while everything is inside the housing like this. Of course, this is a PLA printed piece, so hot soldering iron may not be a great idea, but I did print a second one just in case I warp or melt this first one. Now, I am gonna make this work, but only partly because I am using USB-C connections. However, they'll be connected as USB 2.0. You'll notice that this PCB only has four solder pads. These correspond to the five volt pin, ground and pins A6 and A7, which are the USB 2 data plus and minus pins in the USB-C connector. And I just need to connect those to the corresponding pads on this PCB, which should be fun as the A6 and 7 pads are about a width of a hair and less than a hair's width between them. Now, a lot of you watching probably know what the limitation of a USB type C connection is here. If you think you do, leave a comment below before I tell you the answer at the end, but let's see if I can get this soldered. Not awesome, but it'll work. To finish it off, hot glue, of course. What kind of electrical engineer would I be without hot glue? And this is mostly because a lot of the insulation on the wires melted while I was soldering this down. And I just wanted to keep everything all nice and separated so I don't short anything out. All right, now for assembly, but I did countersink the screw holes for the M2 by six screws I have, but this is the bottom of the print. So they got filled in with that first layer. So I just used a couple of drill bits to bore those countersinks out by hand. So I didn't accidentally drill through the whole part. Okay, now I should just be able to slide this in here and screw it together. All right, one down, one to go. Don't worry, I'll test it as soon as I get the next one built. And for the RF dongle expansion card, my plan was simple. 
I was going to solder another one of these USB-C connectors to one of these USB-A connectors, then remove the PCB from the dongle, slide it in there, again, tweak the design of the enclosure, print it and assemble, simple. The problem, these enclosures are so thin that these USB-A connectors don't fit in here. None of them, out of the dozens I have, none of them fit inside this enclosure. So I'm gonna need to order some other parts to get it done. However, I'm gonna get something done today because, well, I told you I was doing this and because my primary concern with this is can this RF dongle receive a signal if it's inside an enclosure underneath an aluminum laptop. So to do this, I was just gonna basically design a enclosure top just like I did for this to hold another USB-C mail connector like this and the PCB from the RF dongle and just solder the two together. But while I was grabbing some supplies for this, I found this USB-C to USB-A adapter, which is exactly what I was planning on doing with one of these. And this has what looks like an adequately thin USB-A. However, because I usually don't buy crap, this anchor adapter has a full metal housing, not a cheap plastic one, but that's okay because that means I get to make sparks. Well, that one only took two prints and you can see the USB-A port is the exact depth of the inside of the enclosure. So I needed to put a little window in the top for it to poke through, but both the cards are done. I just need to plug them in and see if they work. However, I'm gonna test the MagSafe charger on this phone first, cause I'm not crazy, man. I have no intention of blowing up my new laptop. So first I have my USB-C to magnetic cable that I need to plug in. I also have a USB tester, so MagSafe into here, this into the phone, and I got, welcome, okay, so I have somewhere between four, 4.6, 4.8 volts at 1.3 amps for 6.32 watts of power and the phone is charging. So perfect. Now I said I'd tell you how this card is limited and the limit due to the USB 2 protocol is just this, five volts, one amp for a whole about five watts max power delivery. Now I do have USB-C mail connector with all the pads I would need to get for a full 100 watt power delivery, but that's not a soldering job I have any intention of doing. This was just a proof of concept and now I have everything I need to design a PCB that will allow for full power delivery and will be essentially identical to this USB expansion PCB with the female port set back about 4.2 millimeters, I think it was. 
But enough of that, let's get these installed and tested. All right, here's the framework with two ports open. Now these are a little bit of a tight fit. I will be printing out the final ones in ABS. I just need to build an enclosure for my printer first. But once you get it lined up, they go in. All right, let's get this thing fired up. All right, and first thing first, look at that. I have mouse control. Excellent. I honestly was not 100% sure if that was gonna work with the RF receiver now underneath the laptop, and it's actually underneath the laptop and on the opposite side of my mouse. So that's good, that works. Okay, now let's plug it in. And, oh, it was there for a second. Yep, there it is. And it is charging. And in case I didn't mention it, the Type-C connector I used in here do have the 5.1K ohm pull down and 56K ohm pull up resistors on the PCB. So the PC can detect and knows the battery can sync the current. But I'll call that a successful first step. Now, I do need to source a slimmer USB-A connector like the one used in the Framework USB-A expansion. And then I can redo the RF dongle expansion and get the PCBs designed. I probably won't do another video on this unless there's an overwhelming demand. However, I will post updates on my Twitter, so check the description below for my Twitter handle. Again, this video was more for, well, me and I guess entertainment purposes. These two cards as constructed aren't really practical. Well, I guess the RF dongle can be, but I mean, if anybody wants links to the components I used, hit me up in the comments and I'll see if I can locate those links. Also, you can help get this video out to more like-minded individuals by hitting that like button. It really does help. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe. Oh yeah, also, if you want more info or some workflow or even gaming demos of running the framework with an external GPU, let me know. I was debating on whether or not to do a video on this. In the meantime, you can check out my review of the framework here and consider supporting the channel by subscribing here. Okay, now I'm done.